Hi, Eric. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me on your show. Eric, no, thank you so much for taking the time to do this with us um, in your busy, busy agenda. Um, for all of our publishers watching this interview, we are here with Eric Goldman from Technology and Marketing Law Blog. So, Eric, why don't you let us know a little bit who you are, what is it that you do, and why, why you are here with us today? Yeah, super. Uh, so I'm a law professor at Santa Clara University School of Law, which is located in the Silicon Valley. I've been here for almost 20 years, and I uh, previously worked at another institution, and then I worked as an internet lawyer in the 1990s into the early 2000s. I've been teaching internet law for uh, 30 years. I've been researching and writing on the topic um, as well for that period of time. So uh, my main focus is internet law. That includes uh, some related topics like intellectual property and advertising law. And those are the kinds of issues we run into here regularly at the Silicon Valley. Okay, that's great. Um, so I'm gonna, you know, just start with my first question for you. And is it that what motivated you to start creating content? As a law professor, my job is to manufacture content. Um, most people think about professors as being teachers, and certainly teaching is a part of my um, responsibilities. But primarily, I am expected to and judged by the amount of publications <laughs> that I generate. Um, so okay. for me, the key moment in my professional development was when I decided to create a blog um, as a way of centralizing some of the conversations that I want to have with my audience. Um, okay. And so instead of just focusing on the standard law review articles, which is the typical publications from law professors, I created another venue to communicate with people who are interested in the same topic as me in a way that I thought would be faster and more digestible by them. Okay, that's great. Um, I mean, so you, did you study law, right? So I've been doing law for a long time, but in particular, my topic focuses on internet law, which internet. is a topic that obviously has been active since I started my blog in 2005. Mm -hmm. There's been a okay. lot of developments in that field. Absolutely. So how did that love for writing born? Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't really know, you know, it's kind of, I think, innate um, that uh, That's uh, I never dreamed of being a professor when I was in grad school, but when I was practicing as a lawyer and I was constantly writing, but in a very stylized format, um, I realized I had stuff that I wanted to say. And that's why becoming a law professor was so attractive. Um, and then once I got into the job, I realized I had lots of things I want to say, not all of which would fit the formats of a traditional law review article. And so sure. I, it just was like, I was born to blog as it turns out. It turns out that <laughs> I had, I had this imperative that I had stuff to say and I want to say it in the blog <laughs> format. That's amazing. So you just did it. Uh, well, I actually did it only because some students of mine at my prior institution came to me and said, you should start a blog. I said, I never really thought about it. But as I thought about it some more, I said, you yeah, know, maybe that's a good, really good idea. And they offered to help me with some of the technical setup. And so oh. uh, they made it easy for me to get an on-ramp onto the internet. And once I was there, I realized that that was a really good venue for me. Well, it sounds like your students love you, like you. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? One of the many great perks of my job is that I have great students, many of whom are destined for great things in life. Um, and sometimes they give as good as they get, or sometimes even better. So the students who've helped me with my blog over the years have made a material difference in my uh, professional development. And I'm always grateful for that. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing, you know, a little bit of how it all has been. So is your life any different now that you are publishing content online in a blog? Uh, the blog has really become the centerpiece of my professional identity. I still write in the longer format law review articles. I still write other types of things. Sometimes I'll write op-eds or I'll write advocacy pieces. But for me, the blog is what I'm known for. In my community, both in, <laughs> among lawyers and among law professors, they know that the blog is... Um, uh, you know, where I'm investing, constantly keeping up with the news of the day um, and sharing my perspectives about them. So it's really an essential part of how I do my work. Um, and it's something I think about every day. 
Okay, that's awesome. Perfect. So um, right now it could be like your flagship product, like the thing that represents Eric Goldman. Something like uh, yeah, that. Yeah, abso absolutely. You know, when whenever I run into people in conferences or um, at other professional events, um, the blog is definitely part of that conversation because they're reading it usually. Um, they often have thoughts about what I'm saying. And in some yeah. cases, they want to contribute to it. So I have guest bloggers who come uh, and uh, use my platform to reach my audience, but um, uh, in a way that's the best way for them to express themselves. Okay, that's great. So my next question for you will be, what do you like the most about publishing? And what is the most frustrating part? Maybe the best part of publishing is when I find out that I actually help someone solve their informational needs. And so, for example, because I've got a blog um, uh, archive that goes back to 2005, um, it's not uncommon that a lawyer will go to my blog and search for a keyword and try and find all the times I've talked about the topic. And it's a quick way for them to do some of the research that would otherwise be very uh, daunting uh, to do. And then mm -hmm. the best ones for me is when they tell me that and they see me at a conference or drop me an email saying, your blog helped me do a better job for my clients or build my uh, professional success. Um, and, wow. you know, I mean, that's what a gift that is to me that I was able to help them that way. Um, the worst part of, of uh, blogging is I usually blog about live cases, which means that I'm talking about some dispute and whoever didn't win that dispute usually doesn't like my coverage of it. Um, and so I've been threatened with lawsuits. I've had people complain to my dean. I've had people complain to my colleagues. I've gotten, uh, you know, uh, very steaming voicemails when people threaten me with all kinds of misery in life um, because they didn't like what I said in my blog. Um, and so that's part of the gig, but I don't particularly enjoy that part. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it must be, I mean, not scary, but it must be like, you know, that tough feeling in your stomach like no. you know a lot of other people will be deterred by those threats fortunately i'm a tenured law professor so there's not much they can do to me professionally and i live in a state california that has a very favorable speech protective law called anti-slap laws um so okay. basically I, I don't really worry about it if i do get a legal threat and i've gotten a few i send them over to the university general counsel they have backed me every single time they've been 100 in my corner and so for me given the privilege i have i'm very protected or insulated from these threats um, but it doesn't mean that i don't get them and uh and it is a drag every time i understand i understand um okay but you know apart from that it seems that you are very proud of what you are doing and how your your blog and you your content is helping people out there so you know it is amazing to be having you here and you know that you had such amazing blog and such an amazing publication with great 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 content produced by you like by first hand so it is great um thank you one more time so, Eric, could you please share with us the most rewarding moment in your career? Um, so, to be candid, um, the most rewarding moment in my career doesn't relate to the things we've been talking about. The, the moments that give me the greatest joy are when I have a student come back to me and said, I just achieved some professional outcome that I was hoping to get, and you helped me get there. Um, and, you know, that's why I'm here as a professor. That's what my job is, uh, to go out and to help students get, go from where they are to where they want to get. And it doesn't matter if I want to go in that direction. It's that they want to get there. And I'm here to be a resource, a facilitator, a catalyst to help them do that. So, uh, those are by far the best professional moments I ever have, uh, when I know that I actually made a difference. Wow. Well, wow, that is amazing. Um, I'm so happy to be listening to you and how you express your, you know, like your happiness to be helping out in your way a lot of people, a lot of your students, a lot of other lawyers beginning their careers or stuff like that also as well. So it is just, you know, great to listen to your passion. Um, okay, so... To our audience, let us know how would you describe your publication in three words? Uh, 
nerdy law blog. <laughs> okay, straight to the point. <laughs> Just to be clear, my wife actually describes it in a single word. She calls it the blah. And it's a pun both on blog and law, but also on how she feels about it because she doesn't read it ever. So it's the blah to her. Why? why? Why is she feeling that way? She just is bored by it. She just can't get it. Or it just doesn't speak to her. And she's the bottom line, she's not in my audience. I'm speaking to practicing lawyers who are running into internet law issues. That's not her. So it's not meant for her. So it's the blah. The one word, blah. Okay, blah. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. So let's talk a little bit about the marketing strategies that you have used for your blog. <laughs> um, and if you have used, so can you share with us is, I don't know, some of, our, of your students have maybe helped you a little bit with marketing strategies for your publication. Um, do you have any like encounter with marketing strategies for your publication? Have you so I'm not in the blog to make money. Um, I'm not trying to um, uh, get people to subscribe for pay. I'm not trying to uh, you know, profit from the advertising. I do have ads, but I make very little money from them. Um, the blog's really a resource. And so you know, for me, the main market I can get is when people say, hey, there's this great resource they should go check out. I'm not trying to arbitrage ads to you know, bring more people in at a lower cost than what I can monetize them for. Uh, that's just not, that's not part of my uh, business model. Um, back in the day when I started, blogs were very much about engaging with other bloggers. And there would be a blog discussion in the blogosphere where people would all point to each other as part of this conversation. And so when I first started, there was a lot of that. And that was an integral part of how I got exposure as a blogger, but because other bloggers were engaged with my content or I was engaged with them, and that would then um, expose uh, each other to each other's audiences. Um, with the rise of social media, the reality is that I still have people who subscribe to my blog directly. I have an email subscription. I have an RSS subscription. Um, and I, thousands of people do that. Um, but the reality is that most of my actual engagement comes from social media. So my main strategy uh, for um, uh, marketing is to share my blog posts when I make them on social media uh, to let people know. And then I hope that others will amplify my social media posts. But I, I've seen a reduced engagement, especially with Twitter falling apart. Um, so at this point, you know, I feel like blogging is a little bit of an old school thing that people yeah. are either going for the short, you know, one one uh, social media post uh, commentary, or they're doing threads on social media. But very few people are still really excited about doing the long form type of blogging. Um, and so I haven't figured out how to market it in the modern environment. I keep doing my thing. I have a built in audience. But if I were starting today, I probably would have to ha take very different marketing strategies. Right, right. Okay. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, so what is more important for you in terms of marketing strategies? Reach or audience engagement? Um, so I like both. <laughs> yes. Um, of course, uh, who wouldn't? But, um, you know, uh, in terms of engagement, especially on the blog itself, the reality is that I don't get a ton of comments and usually the comments I get add only a little bit to the discourse. Again, this is different from the old school blogging when I started back in the mid 2000s where there were lots of comments and that was an integral part of um, uh, the engagement. Um, I just don't get that much of it anymore. Um, and what I get, I find sometimes to be not super helpful. Um, so in general, I think between engagement and reach, I prefer reach. I'd like to be exposed to a larger number of audience. Um, but um, for me, because I'm not trying to build a brand in the public, only I'm trying to appeal to the people in the, 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 the areas that I'm writing about, um, you know, at some point when I've read, reached all those people, the fact that I might reach outside of my standard um, audience doesn't really do a lot of good. People come to my blog, they say, what is this? This isn't written for me. I don't understand it. This is the blah, and they leave. Um, so <laughs> it's know. really about reaching the right audience for me, not necessarily getting mass reach. Right, right. Okay, thank you. That's great. So my last question, it will be, what do you think that Neil Six, you know, contributes to that 
goal of reaching new people or what are the benefits of syndicating your content with us? Yeah, it's been a great relationship. I came, I've lost track of how many years I've been in the news tech um, uh, system. I'm guessing it's been a decade or maybe even more. Um, and I get some money from that. Again, I don't get much. Um, so it's not going to, you know, make me rich. Um, <laughs> but it's better than a poke and eye with a sharp stick is, you know, kind of like the baseline that I have. Um, but the most important thing I get from news tech is that I get integrated into other databases that give me that reach that we were just talking about. Especially I get integrated in my field into the Westlaw database, which is something that's a standard resource in the legal community. And I don't have a way to get my blog posts into the Westlaw, but for news tech. So the relationship between news tech and Westlaw gives me an audience that I, I value quite highly. It's a relevant audience for me and I wouldn't have other access to. So, you know, I get paid to get more exposure. That's a win-win. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this. Um, that's right. Um, as I was, you know, just mentioning before, it is so nice to see like a professor like you who is really so passionate about what you're doing and how you're helping your students and how your publication is also helping your students and other people around the world. And we are so glad to have you here to have your publication integrated into Westlow. For example, there is one of our channels. Um, one more time, thank you. And we hope that you keep producing uh, amazing content for years and years to come in your blog. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for a great conversation. Well, Eric, um, any tips, you know, to close this conversation or anything that you would like to say to new publishers in the law field? Let's call it that way. Um, you know, just one tip um, that, uh, and this is a longstanding blogger uh, piece of advice. Someone starting out who wants to engage a longer form scholarship uh, you know, writing like a blog post as opposed to social media would really benefit from trying to do a guest stint at some other existing uh, place rather than trying to homebrew from uh, from ground zero. Um, and so looking for places where you can get an outlet, get some exposure, get, get your feet wet, and then decide if you want to make the longer term commitment to actually invest in something new. Um, so that's my okay. tip to the new uh, entrance to the field. Okay, great, great. Thank you, Eric, one more time for taking the time to do this with, with us and for sharing a little bit of your experience and your journey with us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Bye.